We previously saw how the average rate of change represents the slope of a straight line that connects the uh, two points on a curve, and that the instantaneous rate of change is a process. To compute the instantaneous rate of change of a function, we compute the average rate of change over a sequence of successively smaller intervals. So we see what the average rate of change is, for example, between 1 and 1.5. We compute that. And then we throw that away and look at the average rate of change between 1 and 1.1, 1 .1, and then between 1 and 1.01, between 1 1.0001. 1 and we see what the average rates of change, as we compute them over smaller and smaller intervals centered at our point, level out as. But this seems to be a bit tedious. It's a lot of work. Um, but thankfully, we don't have to do that every time we want to compute the instantaneous rate of change of a function. We have calculus. And calculus was invented to make life easy. So in this lecture, we'll introduce just the concept of the derivative function. So if we have a function, so I'll say given a function f of x, the derivative, this is called the derivative of f of x, then usually we'll say with respect to, or wrt x, um, is basically a new function. So we call the derivative f prime of x. So f prime of x, this is the derivative. And f prime of x and f of x are completely different functions. Now f prime of x is not any old function. It's a function that has a particular property. And that property is that, um, so, the, so let's go back to what we're writing here. The derivative of f of x with respect to x um, is a function, is a function I'll say f prime of x, which we'll call the derivative, that has the following property, has the following property. So when you evaluate f prime at a point, it returns the instantaneous rate of change of the original function f. So let's say when you evaluate f prime of x at a particular point, so let's say x is equal to a, um, f prime returns, so recall every function that there's an input and then the function generates some output by some rule or formula or some process. So what does f prime return? It returns the instantaneous rate of change. It returns the instantaneous rate of change of the original function f at the point x equals a. So that's really quite handy. So instead of going through that long, laborious process of computing the instantaneous rate of change over and over again, if you can get a hold of this derivative function, you can find the instantaneous rate of change of your function f at any point you want. And as it turns out, finding derivatives is actually also pretty simple with calculus. So later on in this course, we'll explore a number of techniques that will allow you to take derivatives effortlessly with a little bit of practice. So let's see an example of this. So suppose we have, I'll show you kind of what I mean. Suppose that we have f of x is equal to 4x cubed plus 5x plus 6. Now, uh, given those simple techniques that I told you that you'll learn later, you'll soon enough be able to just look at this function and know its derivative right away. So its derivative want that. No, oh, wait. It's, it's, so it's derivative, little, it apostrophe is, it is, it's derivative, little, um, is given by f prime of x is equal to 12x squared plus 5. So you'll soon know how to compute that. 
Um, but right now, let's just study what it means. So it, clearly, it's a different function than f of x. So f of x is 4x cubed plus 5x plus 6. f prime of x is 12x squared plus 5. Completely different. Now, supposedly, this f prime of x will return the instantaneous rate of change of the original function f at any point on the x-axis. So you can try that. Pick any x value you want, any x value at all, and approximate the value of the instantaneous rate of change of f of x without using f prime, and then compare it to f prime evaluated at that point. So let's do that now. Let's pick a random number. Um, let's see, we've already used 4, 5, 6, and 12. How about at x is equal to 3? We'll keep it not too big because we've got x cubed. So, so let's try this. So let's try this at x is equal to 3. So first, let's approximate the instantaneous rate of change. So recall that, um, so we'll get start by saying the average rate of change of f from 3 to 3.1. So that would be f of 3.1 minus f of 3 divided by 3.1 minus 3. So f of 3.1, 3.1, 1 cubed times 4. Times 4 plus 5 times 3.1 plus 6. So that is 140.664 and then minus f of 3. 3 cubed times 4 plus 5 times 3 plus 6 is minus 129 then all over 0 0.1 so that's equal to 11.664 divided by 0 0.1 which is equal to 116.64 so that's already a fair approximation for the instantaneous rate of change at x is equal to 3 assuming that the rate of change doesn't change a whole lot between 3 and 3.1. If you want to do better, we can do it better. So what about the average rate of change from 3 to 3.01? So I'm just going to plug that into my calculator. 3.01 cubed times 4 plus 5 times 3.01 plus 6, and then minus f of 3, so it's again minus 129. Okay, so actually, let's look. Is this mistake? Was f of three? F of three is one twenty nine. Okay, yeah, that's right. It's just uh, there's no uh, decimal place right here. So yeah, it's one twenty nine, and then this the rest of that's correct. Okay, so at three point zero one cubed times 4 plus 3.01 times 5 plus 6, we said was 130.133604 minus 129 divided by 0 0.01. So here, the average rate of change is 113.3604. So we would expect that this one is closer to the actual instantaneous rate of change than this one up here, because we use a smaller interval about uh, x is equal to 3. Now let's compare this with f prime of 3. So let's see what the exact value of the instantaneous rate of change is. f prime of 3, well, 3 squared we get 9 times 12 is 108, plus 5 we get just 113 even. So that's the exact value of the instantaneous rate of change of f of x at the point x is equal to 3. You can say, well, is this really uh, correct? We can even do a better approximation. We can compute the average rate of change between 3 and 3.001, and then between 3 and 3.0001. And as we do that, we'll see that the average rate of change is leveling out to the value 113. So as you choose that interval to be smaller and smaller and smaller, it's the average rate of change is becoming closer and closer and closer to simply the number 113. And that's exactly what the derivative does for you. Instead of computing the instantaneous rate of change by uh, 
a number of successive approximations of the average rate of change, you can just can take the derivative and evaluate it at a point and you know the instantaneous rate of change of any function.